One of the most common questions on this channel is in regards to what will happen to our solar system in about 5 billion years when our beautiful sun expands and becomes a very very large red giant uh, that will very likely even cover Earth. Now, uh, what I wanted to do in this particular video is actually investigate this, but specifically looking at what happens to other planets that are uh, gas giants and also their moons. In this video, you're going to learn all about it. And if you still haven't subscribed to this channel, click the subscribe button right now because there's a lot more awesome videos coming in the future. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so we're actually not going to use this simulation because in this particular simulation, none of the planets have moons. Um, and the only other simulation that does have all of the moons, which I believe right here, um, is unfortunately um, a little bit too convoluted. There's too much stuff going on. It's actually very, very slow. And replacing sun here will cause a lot of um, destruction and, and chaos. Uh, so we're going to instead create a completely new system from scratch, um, pretending this is actually our own solar system 5 billion years later. One of the better objects to start with is um, another red giant, uh, or I guess it's an orange giant, called Arcturus. We're going to take this and modify it just a little bit. So it's currently just a little bit more massive than the sun, but it is a lot larger than the sun. If I place the sun next to it, you'll see that the sun is actually much smaller. Uh, so we're going to basically make it um, almost uh, one astronomical unit in radius. Basically, it's going to reach to where the Earth would be, but uh, just a little bit less. So Earth would be at one astronomical unit. This is at 0.9 uh, astronomical unit, where basically we think the sun is going to stop expanding when it becomes a red giant. 5 billion years later. Now, um, you may actually not know what's, why this is happening. So one day our sun will run out of hydrogen and we'll start burning helium that uh, that is currently being created in it right now. And when the helium starts burning, it starts burning very, very, very hot and uh, actually needs a lot more space as well. So it will actually start expanding the core until the sun reaches a much, much, much bigger size. As a matter of fact, it's going to be much bigger, but also less bright. It's going to be only about 22 to maybe 2300 degrees so it's going to be a red giant which is what you see right here uh, and we also need to rename this sun and it's not going to be this massive though it's obviously going to be only one mass of sun but because i can't really change this without changing other components i may have to just keep it as it as it is it's not going to change anything else um, for our purposes now so earth is going to be right uh next to it at a distance of one astronomical unit from the center, which is right here. So there's Earth. You can guess that um, Earth is going to be very, very, very hot and obviously inhospitable to life. But uh, fortunately for us, there are other planets and other moons that we might be able to settle. Mars is at a distance of approximately 1.5-ish um, astronomical units, uh, but it also is still very, very close. However, uh, Mars will become warmer. It will actually might even become more hospitable. But you know what? This is like, look at the size of that object, right? This is still a little bit too close. It's probably going to be dangerous to live here. However, Jupiter and Saturn might actually be uh, in the area known as the habitable zone, which we can actually display by looking at, uh, where is it? I think it's under charts. Oh, sorry, under view. Right, there we go. So right here, if I turn this on, uh, it's going to appear. And that is unfortunately a little bit too far for us. So, uh, but nevertheless, this, this, actually this is a distance of like what? Th over a thousand, uh, 16 to 1700 astronomical units. Well, yes, if there's planet nine out there, maybe it will be habitable. But uh, nevertheless, if the, uh, Jupiter and Saturn stay in the same position as they are today, there is a very high chance that some of the moons of um, Jupiter and Saturn and possibly even Uranus and Neptune might become habitable. So let's uh, see if this actually happens. I'm going to try to place all of the planets that we have with their satellites. Hopefully this works. Uh, in, in the game, if you actually click this right here, whole system, it should technically place them. I don't know if it's going to be stable. I may have to do it manually. So we have Jupiter at around 5.2 astronomical units from the sun. 
um, and I believe it got added with all of its objects, all of its moons. Look at that. Look at this beautiful procession. All of them are here. Hopefully they don't actually start colliding with each other. Then we have Saturn at 9.5 astronomical units, uh, which is around here. And then we have Uranus at 19.2 astronomical units, uh, which is a little bit farther away. Uh, so hopefully one of these planets will actually have good conditions for hospitable moons, hospitable life. So maybe this will be our future home. Now, by the way, uh, when the sun becomes a red giant, oh yeah, I need to add Neptune. When the sun becomes the red giant, um, okay, Neptune is, where is it? 30 astronomical units. Uh, as a red giant is going to actually stay in that phase for a long, long time. Um, here we go. Um, or, so this particular phase will be around 1 billion years long. Uh, so in 5 billion years, it becomes this. And then for 1 billion years, it's going to burn helium and stay as a red giant. And after this, it's going to basically kind of slowly turn into um, a white dwarf. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, so for 1 billion years, we'll have an opportunity to basically, if we're still around, that is, to basically go and maybe colonize one of these other objects um, if they're hospitable enough. Now, we're going to find out if they are um, after some time. I, I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but hopefully not too long. Uh, and we're going to wait here and see if one of them actually does become a more hospitable target. And I'm really hoping that it's going to be either um, a moon like Titan or possibly uh, one of the moons of um, Jupiter. So, for example, Ganymede. Maybe one of them will actually have high enough temperature. So, we still haven't really waited long enough. So, we're going to wait a little bit longer for all of these objects to kind of uh, warm up and to essentially start getting as much sunlight as possible. And so this is kind of what it looks like. This is what the new solar system looks like. If you look at this, uh, at this from, from the top here, uh, obviously uh, Venus and Mercury are long gone because they're basically inside the sun now and have been disintegrated and most likely became little particles of atoms. And this is what Earth looks like. Earth is essentially just kind of a burning um, lava land with a temperature of uh, about 700 degrees Celsius, so just a little bit uh, warmer than what Venus is like today. All right, so let's see if any of them warmed up yet. And looks like many of these objects um, around Jupiter have already gotten a little bit too hot. So some of these smaller moons, uh, irregular moons of Jupiter, have a temperature of about 180 degrees Celsius. That's uh, almost twice above boiling temperature of water. If I look at the bigger moons of Jupiter, oh, and by the way, Jupiter itself is actually pretty warm with 138 degrees Celsius uh, surface temperature, which means it's even hotter on the inside. Okay, so let's start with the uh, four Jovian moons, which are obviously the four most important uh, moons of Jupiter. And these are, where, where did they all go? All right, I actually have to manually re-add them. And anyway, so here we go. Io, well, pretty hot, 190 degrees. Well, it wasn't really cool to begin with, but it's still too hot for us. Ganymede, uh, okay, surface temperature 530 degrees Celsius. That is very, very nice. Now, it's actually, it does contain a lot of water, so technically it should look something like this. And it doesn't actually have any liquid on the surface because it is too hot here, so most of the water is either gas or plasma because it's a little bit too close to the supergiant sun. Uh, next on the list is Callisto, and I believe Callisto suffers from the same problem with high temperature. So here it's a little bit lower than uh, Ganymede, 163 degrees Celsius, but still too high for liquid water to exist, so not habitable either. Uh, lastly, we have Europa, and interestingly, Europa has a temperature of about 80 degrees Celsius, so still quite uh, toasty, but as you can see, it basically is one... Oh, well, that just happened. It was a one liquid uh, bowl, but now it's become something else. That's very interesting. So it's suddenly uh, back to being frozen. Technically, it shouldn't be frozen because it does have a lot of water on the surface. Uh, but I think the water, for some reason, is evaporating really, really quickly here. I'm guessing it's because of the proximity to the sun and because uh, it doesn't really have anything to protect it from this uh, from this sudden heat. But anyway, so that's Europa. Uh, none of these are acceptable. So none of the um, moons of Jupiter are going to be livable. 
they're going to be a little bit too toasty for that 1 billion years. All right, let's go to Saturn and let's look at some of the bigger uh, moons here, starting with the biggest contender. And I'm going to start with my favorite moon, Titan. So there is Titan right here. Doesn't really look uh, the same. I'm not sure what's happening here. But the temperature is actually relatively lower than before. So right now Titan is really, really cold. It has something called reverse greenhouse effect because of the way it's composed and because of what's on the surface. And uh, it does have a temperature that is like minus 190 degrees Celsius. But if, uh, or not if, but when the sun is a red uh, giant, the temperature will actually increase to 63 degrees Celsius. Uh, a lot of the things on the surface will actually melt. Uh, it currently does have a lot of water, a lot of carbon dioxide and a lot of other ices. So this will very, very likely become a liquid planet as well. Might actually look something like this. This might be the future um, face of Titan. Uh, but technically, because of the you know because of the fact that it does have atmosphere, it's, it has an atmosphere of 1.2 atmospheric pressures. It might be uh, as long as there's like islands or something, it might be kind of habitable. So maybe just maybe this might be our future home, if we need a home that's nearby and not too toasty. The next on the list is Rhea, and for some unknown reason, Rhea is actually hotter than Titan. I'm not exactly sure why. I'm guessing maybe it's because it's darker and because it doesn't have this reverse um, greenhouse effect where basically Titan reflects a lot of the sunlight. Uh, possibly this is why this is actually hotter. It keeps uh, going up. It's actually above 150 degrees Celsius now. So yeah, definitely not Rhea. Next on the list is Dione, and I just realized that um, Dione actually has its albedo set to 100%. Albedo is uh, how much light is reflected from uh, from a moon and uh, or from any object really. And in this case, Dione reflects 100% of all of the sunlight. That's unrealistic. We're going to change this to about 30. And let's see how the temperature changes. So currently it's minus 200 degrees Celsius. It's going to increase dramatically. And it stopped around 35 degrees Celsius, it seems. Uh, so that's actually very interesting. So Dione has a relatively comfortable uh, temperature, still a little bit too warm uh, because the average temperature on Earth is about 15 degrees Celsius. This is 35. Uh, but because there is no atmosphere on Dione and because it does have a lot of water, it is probably going to look something like this. It's going to be a water bowl. It's going to be a molten water bowl that is basically uh, has a lot of really, really warm water. And then we have another object here, another moon called Iapetus. And for some unknown reason, I'm possibly guessing it's because of the reflectivity again. No, it's not. Anyway, so this is a very super hot object. Don't know exactly what happened here, but it does seem to have a temperature of about 700 degrees Celsius. So of all of these objects in, um, in Saturn system, it really seems that it's the Titan that might... Oh, wait a second. The temperature is 62 degrees now. Well, anyway... Titan so far is the best candidate, but still a little bit too hot. We're going to go to um, Uranus, and unfortunately Uranus doesn't have any big enough moons for us to kind of consider, but there is a moon called Titania, um, which has a pretty um, okay-ish size of about 500 kilometers in radius, but the temperature here, as you see, is minus 50 degrees uh, Celsius. It's a little bit too cold, and this has no atmosphere. Uh, Uranus also has Miranda, uh, also minus 50 degrees Celsius and also no atmosphere. It's a little bit smaller at, at 200 degrees, um, at 236 kilometers in radius. And then we have Ariel, which is 546 kilometers. So all of these are a little bit too small. None of them have atmosphere and also very cold. So all of the moons of Uranus are already too cold. So it seems like if there was a planet in between Saturn and Uranus, or something, some kind of a object between them that had atmosphere, this would be a perfect location for us to have our new home. Because if I'm pretty sure if I go to Neptune and if I look at the only satellite that I was going to consider, which of course is Triton, it's going to be too cold as well. Yeah, Triton, as you can see, is minus 160 degrees Celsius. Um, it does have a really nice size of 1300 kilometers in radius, but it is a little bit too far from that red giant even though it looks so beautiful from here, it's not going to provide enough heat for us to live here a comfortable life. So, of all of the planets, of all of the planetary systems, that is, 
it is the Saturn planetary system that we may actually have to consider in the future when the sun becomes a red giant five billion years in the future if we're still around if we need a new home we may have to settle one of these moons uh saturn itself is actually uh really comfortable 30 degrees celsius on the surface so if you um, if we actually end up building like cloud cities like in star wars we might be able to actually live here and orbit around this uh, planet in this atmosphere and survive there because it's actually not going to be cold anymore it, right now it's very cold but in the future it's going to be just the right temperature so maybe this is our home right here maybe it's saturn titan possibly Diony and maybe even Rhea. Let's see if uh, if Rhea actually got even hotter. Oh, never mind. Forget about Rhea. 260 degrees, still going up. So I guess it's only Diony, which seems to be still okay. Titan, which uh, definitely is going to be a really interesting uh, moon um, in the future, and of course Saturn itself. And so basically that is it. That is what I wanted to explore in this video. I wanted to find out what happens to all of the moon systems or, or planetary systems with the moons in the future when the sun becomes the red giant and uh, where our new home might be. If these planets actually do change position in, in the future, because that's quite possible, there's something called planetary migration where planets actually do dislodge each other and change um, their orbits. Uh, we might have a different system where that we might consider as our home but right now it seems to be saturn anyway thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something from it if you did don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share this video and don't forget to like it if you actually enjoyed it as well as consider supporting this channel on patreon because it does help me with purchasing all kinds of equipment to make these videos a little bit higher quality in the future anyway thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next video and as always bye bye